In today's video, we're going to break down the differences between two absolutely incredible but somewhat different dog breeds, the Doberman and the Labrador. Welcome back to the Femre Doberman Show. If this is your first time here, my name's Will. I'm a canine behaviorist and I'm the founder and CEO here at FemreCanineLeaders.com. And this channel is dedicated to helping you learn everything that you could possibly want to know about the incredible Doberman, then how to become a high level canine leader that can raise perfect Doberman companions. So if you love the Doberman as much as we do here at Fenre, start your journey by hitting that subscribe button and turning on the notification bell so that you'll never miss a future Doberman video. And today we're going to look at the differences between the two beautiful, large and extremely capable working dog breeds, the Doberman and the Labrador Retriever. So let's jump straight into the video and we'll start with the history of these fascinating dogs. So then, the Doberman is a German breed named after its creator, Karl Doberman. A tax collector by profession, Mr. Doberman must have felt a strong need to have a reliable personal protection dog by his sides when making those uncomfortable house calls. Fortunately for him, he also ran the local dog shelter. Around 1890, he set out to create the perfect guardian breed for his requirements, a large, fearsome-looking dog who would courageously defend its owner. For this end, he crossed more aggressive breeds like the Rottweiler and the German and Pincher with large and giant breeds like the Great Dane and the English Greyhound. And by mixing in the gentle Greyhound, Mr. Doberman made his new breed Karma a more closely bonded to its handler. So then the Labrador Retriever on the other hand was bred for vastly different purposes. Whilst its name suggests the Canadian province of Labrador as its origin, this dog comes from Newfoundland. In the 1500s, the large shaggy Newfoundland dogs were crossed with smaller local water dogs. The breed resulting from this mix was given the not very glorious name Lesser Newfoundland. However, when it came to their capabilities, there was nothing lesser about them. For their fishermen owners, these dogs jumped into the icy waters off the coast of Newfoundland to pull in fishing nets filled and to retrieve fish that had dropped off the hooks. Equipped with thick, water-repellent coats and web paws, this new breed was perfectly suited for the job. In the early 1800s, these intrepid retrievers were then brought to Poole, England, where the Earl of Malsbury took a liking to them. And from there, the Labrador simply boomed in popularity to become one of the most, if not the most popular dog breed on the entire planet. Sorry to very quickly interrupt the video, guys. I just wanted to let you know, if you haven't done it already, over on our website, FenrirK9Leaders.com, we have a completely free quiz that I designed myself for you to be able to take. It asks you a few questions based on some of the things that I think are really important for what guard dog breed will be perfect for you. So you go through that quiz, you answer the questions honestly and then at the end it will give you what I think the perfect guard dog breed for you is. And again, it's completely free, just trying to help you guys out as much as we can. So again, there'll be a link down to it in the description box below. If you haven't done it already, go even if you're not necessarily interested in getting a guard dog breed anytime soon. I know a lot of people have found it really fun just to see what kind of breed I would recommend for you. So get stuck in, go and have a look. But without further ado, we'll get back to the video you were just watching. So then, now we know where these breeds came from let's look at the details of the differences in their looks because although it might be obvious the details are quite interesting now the dobermans are large and elegant dogs with short coats and athletic well-proportioned bodies overall their appearance they give that impression of great speed and agility these canine athletes are almost exclusively black or chocolate with those clearly distinguished tan rust or mahogany markings and can grow up to around 28 inches tall and as is usually the case that's for the males with females being a little bit shorter now the heads are narrow and elongated with no marked stop and those long gorgeous muzzles traditionally they do have cropped ears and docked tails however in countries like here in the uk that is now completely illegal and it's becoming much more common to see uncropped and undocked dobermans now labradors are built far stockier than the sleek doberman especially the more compact and sturdy showline labs they have long rather thick tails and pendant shaped ears that hang down their short coat comes in black yellow or chocolate and male labs tend to measure up to about 24 inches and again females being a little bit shorter 
So then for me, this is where it gets really fun, where we can talk about the intelligence and trainability differences. And just like Dobermans, Labradors are ever ready to work and please their owners, which makes them extremely easy to train. Both dogs thrive when provided the opportunity to perform, even if that work only consists in fetching toys or running through obedience drills. Highly intelligent dogs, they love nothing more than flexing their physical and mental muscles, which is why lots of mental stimulation should be provided for both breeds. One possibility to keep these dogs sharp mentally is working them in the fields of obedience, tracking, guarding or gun dog training. But also regular walks in areas with lots of different smells, sights and sounds are excellent ways to provide both physical and mental stimulation for your incredible Doberman or Labrador Retriever. So then what about those temperament differences between the two? And in their temperament, these breeds are actually quite similar. Active, keen and alert outside and when working, but calm and composed in the house. That said, the Labrador is the more boisterous of the two and can take some work to teach house manners as a youngster. Dobermans, however, are so calm and settled indoors that they even can make excellent apartment dogs. They are also natural guard dogs who can and will protect you in your home, whereas the Labrador can be trained to sound an alarm but should not be counted on when it comes to actually attacking a burglar or an aggressor. Both the Doberman and the Labrador absolutely love children, which does make them ideal companions for families. They are perfect for active owners who love to take their dogs on outings and who want to share their home with them. These are very much people-oriented dogs who should be allowed to live inside with their families. Labradors are affectionate and outgoing characters, very friendly to other animals and humans, especially those children. Dobermans are more reserved and take longer to build up trust towards people that they are more unfamiliar with. Okay then, so what about exercise and the grooming differences? Well, Labradors require a huge amount of daily exercise. For example, vigorous walks, games of fetch, runs next to a bicycle or swims in a pool, river or lake. The same is the case for Dobermans, even though they do not usually share the Labrador's love for water. Both breeds should be given at least one good long run off leash every single day, combined with a few other walks and play sessions throughout the day. As they both have a higher prey drive they can easily be enticed to playing with toys such as balls, kongs, frisbees and flirt poles. Neither breed needs all too much grooming. Dobermans do fine with one or two brushes a week with a soft bristle brush but Labradors are quite heavy shedders and should be brushed daily if possible especially during shedding season which usually takes part in the spring and autumn. So that was my quick fire breakdown of two of the most popular and two of the breeds that I absolutely adore, the Doberman and the Labrador. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that like button. And remember, if you love the Doberman as much as we do, to subscribe and turn on that notification bell. We have two new Doberman dedicated videos coming to this channel every single week. So I can't wait to speak to you again on the next episode of the Femria Doberman Show.